Hey folks, DIY Dan here. Today we're here with Average Joe from Doing Stuff with Average Joe. We're going to work on, or more likely he's going to work on, his uh, rear wheel bearings. Apparently they've given him some trouble and uh, he's asked us to come along for the ride and since I don't have a solid axle rear uh, rear axle vehicle. I thought it'd be fun for us to do that. So we're going to catch you up on where he is because he's already started and then we'll get to it. And don't do that. So let's go see where we left off. Okay. Or do you want to go ahead? Let me. It's a 2001 Toyota Tacoma Free Runner uh, TRD uh, first generation. So it's this, I don't know how. I think you can do first gen and second gen about the same, but I think third gen Tacomas are different. Um, I was getting a lot of noise, thought it was a center stationary bearing for the drive shaft and bought another one of those and put it in, it didn't fix the problem, jacked it up, ran it in forward and reverse on the, on the deck and it was making a lot of noise from the rear. And the, so hopefully that's all it is, is these rear wheel bearings. And what we've done so far is we've just gotten the wheels off, we've drained the rear end, and we went ahead and got the drums off and just used brake clean and cleaned off all of the uh, dust and everything off of the brakes. So we've got a special tool that we bought from someone named Dwayne on eBay, which I guess, you know, if you plan on doing something like this, I can give Dan the link. And Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, no. Uh, we have 120 no bucks. Today. Paid for it myself. <laughs> Bought the got a 2010 press as well because it, this job at a dealership, when I called them, they said it would be $800 parts and labor. I said, okay, well that's not too bad. And he said per side. And I said, okay, yeah. How much are the parts? So I got more time than I've got money. So that's why as I decided. Do we all. <laughs> that's that's why we decided to do it here. So got the bearings from a place called Marlin Crawler, came with a whole kit, $53 per side, and then between that and buying the tools I needed to buy and all the other supplies, I'm spending less than it would have cost me to do one side at the dealer. So there you go. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so as you see, pulled the wheel off, got the, uh, there's the drum drums right there brake drum as your parking shoes or brake shoes I'm sorry and uh, you can see it right over there that's the rear differential he's already drained that so uh, he's using an entire can of brake clean to clean it up and next thing is we'll be pulling this right Joe well we got to take this loose the emergency brake cable loose and then we have to take the brake line loose from the wheel cylinder and then we could take the four bolts out and uh, the whole thing should come the out. whole assembly as an assembly right correct okay that's what's great about this tool you can leave the brakes attached perfect because uh, everybody knows rear drum brakes uh, are a pain in the butt to deal with so let me get this set up so where we can see and we'll get started I can move the camera, don't let that interfere with right, doing the work. All right, take the pin out, push your pin out, and there's a washer or something right in there as you can see. It may have to kind of, maybe a little. I think on the one that he did, yeah, it's like a clip. Me personally, I like to take, instead of dropping things in a pan, if I can, I'll just go ahead and put them back in where they belong so you don't forget where they go. Now I'll go ahead and take the brake line loose. Where's my. Had to buy a universal set because they didn't have just a 730 seconds plug. Oh, and you've got metal lines, right? Yes. Not rubber lines. And unfortunately, there's only this 
to the flare nut wrench. Whenever you do any kind of brake lines or air conditioning lines or anything, you want to make sure you use a flare line wrench because a flare nut wrench because it's a it's more grip on it and they're easy to strip because a lot of times they're like a soft metal, so they won't put the plug on it. That's I guess yeah, another get, reason. Get in there. Get a picture of that. So the flare nut wrench will go on over that. And then just break it loose. And unlike a regular wrench, obviously, you have to take it off in order to turn it. Unless you have to replace, obviously. Push it back, cap it off, and there you go. That's done. And just as a side note, remember brake fluid will eat your paint or anything, a lot of other things, so just be careful what you get it on. Now we're taking the screws out, the fasteners out. If little little average Joe can break the break the nut loose. Okay, you want me to get broke loose for you? Yeah. There you go. See how I did that? You can try that on the next one. When you get the nut out, Joe, put it right here in this pan. Okay. Alright, so we got the four nuts loose in the back, and so we should come, we got to have the pan underneath just to make sure we drain the oil, but sometimes there's residue, it's been sitting all night. Oh yeah, it's probably going to come pretty easy. There you go. Oh, that was easy. Never can tell with these things. Yeah, and see, we are getting a little bit of oil. Whoa. It is kind of heavy. Wow, I have an ABS tow ring. How about that? I don't know why I have an ABS tone ring. Which but is where? Go ahead and point that out. This is the ABS tone ring. So, yeah, if you have, you have an ABS tone ring on drum brakes. Well, you have ABS on drum. Yeah, uh, see? So, I mean, you do have that. But. Yeah, see that play? And that bearing? That's pretty bad, but that's 225, 226,000 miles on those. Alright, well, just uh, real quick. These are the bolts. Where the bolts were that he took out, or that were taken out, I should say fasteners. Consistent. And that's where the axle fits, goes in, and that's your seal right there. This is the seal that was leaking right there. I hope we got the right one. I really do. And there's also this O-ring. Does that come in the kit? Yes. Alright. Some good. kits so it does not. No, we'll show the kit and the part number in just a sec, but the uh, differential splines in on here and that's where you get your your power to your wheels. Yep. See there's the spot for the ABS sensor right there. Alright, so like you say it's a kind of a shocker. But I have the ABS tone ring being as my truck doesn't have ABS. So we're going to have to do a step that I wasn't anticipating, which is to get this tone ring and this sleeve off, which there is no snap ring for this sleeve. But I'll show you. I could have, I guess, maybe and theoretically saved some money because I watched a video where somebody was doing this and they just reused this sleeve down here where it holds the bearing in. But this is what the sleeve looks like, at least the one that holds the bearing in. We have a polished side and a tapered side. Pulled up a little farther. There you go. So the polished side and the tapered side. And 
this tapered side is supposed to fit like this, but on the videos that I've seen, because of the new design of the seal, you have to put it in backwards, otherwise it's not going to ride right. And that, but that's on a regular. I may have to go back and look at that because this is an ABS setup on this truck. I, I, I'm just confused. Anyway, is that the whole bearing kit right there? This is the kit. Yes. We got the part number. We can show everyone. This is for a non-ABS, and the name of the company is Marlin Crawler. You got it already? Yeah. Again, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, but that's just where we got the bearings and the, the seals and all from. And it's a complete kit for $53. You get this uh, retainer. You get the seal, which the dust seal, which goes on the inside, and you'll see it after a while. The snap ring. The big O ring. And the bearing. So we'll obviously get into all that in just a little bit. Hopefully, if it's the right kit. So. All right. So what you want to do is, if you have this ABS tone ring, you have to knock out one of these studs. It's just like knocking out a lug stem. If you've ever changed a lug stem on your car, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so, put your nut back on. And I'm going to get closer so you can see it. I'm going to try to use this 40 ounce, 48 ounce dead blow hammer to do this. But you don't really want to booger the threads or anything like that. So, I'm going to give it a shot. It's not the most stable table in the world. It's just a dining room table, actually. Kitchen table. So, we'll give it a shot with this first and see what it does. So it's going to be kind of noisy and probably shake everything on the table. So I may have to move it. To, I may have to move it over here to the corner or a corner. That's okay. Get a little more. A little more. Oof. More stability, I guess. Ready? Ah. All right, let's try something a little bit harder. Harder faced, got a brass hammer, or a bronze hammer. Let's try that. There you go. Oh, mm -hmm. Snap-on gives warranties, by the way. <laughs> well, and the reason why we put the nut on the end of the screw is we don't want to, or uh, I'm sorry, bolt, is we don't want to mushroom the end because then you'll never get that uh, fastener back on, that nut back on there. So using that's a good trick so you don't ruin your bolts. Right. Sorry, I didn't clarify. That's okay. That's why I'm here. It is my channel, after all. I gotta say, do something. <laughs> See, when I don't know what I'm doing, because the DIY Dan is only a DIY guy, he's not a mechanic, and always does this for entertainment purposes, but when I don't know, I go to someone who does, so that's why I'm here with Average Joe. See the little teeth? Just like a little, little small lug stem. Right, Basically. exactly. So if you've ever removed your lug bolts, they're, they're designed the same way. So it's a good thing that we got this. This is for pulling the tone ring. Which I That's part of the fun of DIY. Is you, you, hey, you go in with a basic knowledge or an advanced knowledge like Joe. And uh, you learn as you go sometimes. And that's kind of the, the mantra of my channel is I learn as I go. A lot of the stuff I do on my channel I already know basically, but uh, there's some things I don't know. Sometimes I don't film stuff I don't know. <laughs> but I'll film it the next time that problem comes up. I always look at it this way. If you're going to do it and, and do like a film of it and everything, show where you messed up. 
because I know me personally, I like to know, like, oh, geez, I shouldn't have done that. That was a bad idea. And then you can see, oh, well, I shouldn't have done that. You see, I used that dead blow hammer. It didn't really damage anything other probably than the hammer, but it wasn't the best idea to do. Well, there are, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, and I do that, and I do have a video, I'll link it right up here, uh, where I did an hour-long video on a Honda Odyssey brake replacement, front rotors and brakes. I left all the mistakes in, which is why it's an hour long, um, but uh, I do try to do that. I don't try to hide the mistakes I make. Um, because sometimes, everybody makes them. Everybody makes them, but sometimes it's the first time I've ever done something like you know the suspension on my car I'd never done it before and I didn't film it but back to this the job at hand go ahead All right, there are several tools that you can buy to do this with like I said this tool was designed he's actually an engineer the guy that designed it and um, he made this where most of the tools that you have in order to do this you've got to knock all four of these out you have to take this whole backing plate off all the brakes off and have everything out of the way in order to get it to work. He designed this to do that, and boom, there you are. You take out that one one bolt, so that's that much less chance that you'll have to ruin something. Just keep it over there. Then you take the main body of the tool, which, by the way, is made in the USA. Which we always support. Exactly. He's a local guy, America. not here, but in, uh, I don't know if it's Nebraska, maybe? I think it was in Nebraska. Okay, so you put that on like so. You put your washers, your nuts on. And if I... That are supplied with the kit. And how's the tool going to operate? Well, what we're going to do... I'll Are you going to draw it out with the bolts, or is it... No, no, it, you have to put it in the press. And he did design this to work with the Harbor Freight press. But most presses are the same. So, alright. So you put those on. Snug them up a little bit. What size bolts are those? Give me a 17. I don't know why I'm doing so poorly on this. I usually am okay, I, I stink at guessing sizes. Well, make sure it's just up under the tone ring, too, and not on anything else. I don't think All right, what's next? All right, I don't think these are as tall as they used to be, because if I remember right, the video I watched, he put, put it on the top one and had plenty of room. So you have to take your axle. And what we put these things in and yeah, the that's the only thing we've done to set up off camera. Yeah. So what we're going to have to do now, I think. You want to help him lift them? Yeah, you're going to have to help me, Joe. Grab this pin. Pin out. Lower it down. There. Good catch, Joe. Lower it down. But it didn't hit your feet. <laughs> that would have broken my stuff. Lower it down. So what you have to end up doing, I don't know where you're looking at. I'll get it. I'm going to pull this down. Joe, there's a screw right in the top here. 
Just screw it out as far as it'll go. Oh, oh. Good catch. You got it? <laughs> These things are not made as good as they used to be. Alright. So I had to make a couple of minor adjustments off camera, but we'll talk about those later. So, go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put in a word of caution. Apparently, these new uh, presses, the way they're building them now, is not quite as good as it used to be. It's missing the handles down there, raising the lower that. There was a plate. It seems like there's a plate missing that this should sit on and keep from falling over. So, we'll have to do something to modify this thing a little bit at, at a later date. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead and start jacking it down. But you can use your finger or you can use, you know, the, the handle that came with it. Get on. If you want to keep your eye on it, make sure that you are going to be centered, which we are not. We're going to adjust that right now. Down here. And it's going to be fairly noisy when it turns loose because you have all the springs and everything, but once you get it on there, just push, you don't want to jack too hard, and that's, all that big noise was pretty much the springs on the brakes making that noise, you just keep going, a little bit of time, and it should just pop that tone ring and that uh, retainer off, fairly easy. It's moving. Yep, I'm worried about our distance. Why in the world this thing is so stinking low? But I guess, in a way, it's kind of good. Because that way it won't fall quite so far. There it is. There it is. And uh, if you don't have a press, uh, you might be able to take it to your local mechanic shop. They may do it for you for either free, free or a nominal fee. I know not all of us have a press, like I don't have one, but I didn't know where to go, so I just went ahead and bought one. That's you know basically. Or if you've got a local machine shop, they might do it for you. Yeah, Again, call them, tell them what you want, and they'll tell you how much you're going to charge. So now, Joe, if you will, grab that side. We're going to go up with it. You can grab it right here. Something. Can you go up any farther? No. One of the reasons why I did get this press also is because it came with these plates. These plates are like $120 for a set if you have to buy them separate. But they're really good plates. Okay, so, you know, obviously you don't want to put these on with something like a little electric, but I'm just going to spin them off for time's sake. Get the tool off. Tone ring. And see, it's basically the same. And see, that's an inner. Is that the race for the yeah, tone so ring? you can see if you can... Focus. No, this isn't the race. This is the retainer. Okay. All it does is hold this on. This rides on the seal. Okay? So in this seal. Like that. That's what that seal rides on. And you can see it. See the mark? Mm-hmm. So what you can do if you don't have a kit like this that comes with these, you can take this retainer and put it here and take this retainer because it has no damage to it it's got no you know reference mark here and move it to the inboard side and then you don't have to spend the money on the on the rings if you don't want to but like I say this kit came with everything you needed and I saw several of them that would come with some stuff and not with other stuff and most of them that I saw did not come with the big o-ring seal that goes on the axle tube. Alright, so what, what you want to go ahead and do now, while you got all this, because you won't need that tool again on this side, 
to reinstall these items, go ahead and fish your. And what the one guy that I watched had done, he had a spare rotor, and he set the rotor down, and it gave just nice, really action there for that. Ooh, look how rough that bearing is. Let's fish your stud back through. You should be able to take a couple of these washers, put them on, maybe one more just to be safe, because you're just pulling it through, and if you see there's a shoulder right there, so if you don't put the, if you don't put the washers on there, you'll never get it down far enough. I normally would do this with an impact, but for this, I'm just going to do it by hand, just because it's supposed to be fairly easy to do. Like I said, once you do this, as you can see, the bearing's already partially coming out of the housing here. And what is that again, a 15? This is a 14 millimeter. 14, okay. These are 17 that come with this kit. Okay. So. Just tighten it up till it stops. Alright. This is the actual nut that goes on there, I guess. These might have fit. I don't know what it is. So then you can kind of judge it. You can look at it there, see. Okay, it looks like it's in as far. You can reach up inside here. I feel that it's flush against the backing plate. Or I guess it's more the housing here. Alright, so now for the several different ways to do this. If you all have ever messed with snap rings before, I don't know what kind of experience you have with them. But this is one that is not one of my favorites. I don't much care for these. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. This is what the snap ring looks like. The ones I'm used to dealing with have like holes in them. So, I've got a lot of these tools already. There's actually a different type of snap ring flyer that has like little ears that stick off the end that you can open up. It's probably better for these, but I don't have those, so we're not going to use them. I'm not going to lie to you, this is not easy to do. Snap rings right here against that race. Or, no, you know, you got me calling it the race. <laughs> I'm going to try this with these first. Pocket screwdriver. Yeah, I got my one I use for my cigars. In valuable, place. valuable tool. I tell you, it's funny because Snap On Man, Matt Co Man, Cornwell guys, they all give them away like they're meaningless pieces of junk. And sometimes they are the best tool. People laugh at me because I carry them around like I do. Well, that means I carry those. I carry these little pliers. These things help out. You wouldn't believe how much. And this little, little small six inch, five inch, six inch wrench, and a knife, there you go. The only thing bad I've ever seen about these things is sometimes the magnets, if you keep them in your shirt pocket and you're up underneath a truck or something, will come out and you'll need it and you won't be able to find it and there it is stuck to the rear end or the drive shaft on something. But you should be able to take it, feed it in like that. Hold that out. You know, if you get a new snap ring, you shouldn't be too worried about messing up the old one. It's losing it at the very end. If I can get it to pry up. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was going to say, worst case scenario, if you need to cut it or something, because you've got a replacement, you could do that. Right, yeah, you can cut them if you need to. We're going to try to get the bearing out. And I'll go ahead and show you, as when we knocked this stud out, it partially pulled the bearing out. You can see it. It's not sitting flush anymore in the bearing housing. So... What you have to do with that before this tool will sit flush like it's supposed to to get the proper, uh, uh, well, the proper seating so you don't tear anything up. So what you do, you get a piece of wood down here on the, on the floor, take the whole assembly, turn it over, do that. Slide back again, actually. Okay, you see, you see the big difference there, can't you? I yep. Mean, I can. Yep. So now your tool will fit, and if you still have, once you get the snap ring off, you still have that retainer. See how flush that sits? You still have the retainer on there, but both the bearing and the retainer will pop off with this. Oh. You have to use your, I'm sorry, you have to use your original nuts, your uh, flange nuts. This impact has several different settings. If you put it on one, it's real slow. So. sure you get a good couple of threads and it doesn't have to be tight that's why I'm not worrying about making it tight so what we're going to end up doing now is the same thing we did before it's the same process as we did before except now we're separating this from the axle shaft itself which will pop the bearings the bearing and the uh, little retainer off as well so this whole thing will come, this, this will stay attached to this, and the axle shaft will just fall out. And we'll clean the axle shaft up a little bit, check that bearing, match it to the other one, and pray that it's the right bearing. Alright, so we got it back in the press. Tighten the jack up there. Make sure it stays centered. And we're going to go ahead and hopefully not have any trouble here with this. I'm really, I mean, it's, I guess what you would consider it's a delicate type job, but it's not, you know, like machine precision. And we'll have the same issue. It should pop. And I cannot stress enough, make sure you're taking that snap ring out. Because that snap ring is meant to hold a lot of pressure. There it goes. That scared us all, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Ooh, that was a tight one. I don't know how loud it sounded to you guys, but that was loud as all get out in here. Who says there's no excitement on this channel, right? I mean, come on. You got to remember with this, if it's if it's a non-ABS axle shaft, that tapered area is going to be a little shorter, so it's going to come off a lot faster. So what you're doing now is you're actually pressing, pulling. Pressing the axle down, I guess. You've got longer shaft, so now it's got to get past where the tone ring and that other retainer ring was mounted as well. So that's what's taking it a little bit longer. And there. Uh, there we go. There it is. Usually they're longer and one solid piece. Now, because they had such a hard time. 
getting these in. Yeah. Alright, we spared you the joy of taking the tool off, but... Well, yeah, loosening it up. Once you get the tool off, you set it to the side. Here's your retainer. That was, that was our problem. Yeah, that was what was holding it on mostly. Some bearings right here. Oh, it actually feels like that's what we got, so that's good. And now what you... You can try and take it out with your fingers, but it's probably not going to come. Oh, it does. Holy smokes. Alright, so here's the dust seal I was talking about. It is actually different than the one that he shows. Not much, but it is different. And obviously you're not too worried about this dust seal because you got a new one. I might have to get bigger pliers for this. <laughs> now I sound like Scotty Kilman. We don't want to do that. No. <laughs> No offense to Scotty. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Oh, it's tighter in there than I thought it was going to be. So that is garbage. Sounds like TJ Brule now. That's garbage. Throw that away. This is a new one. You know, I don't want to check. Your new parts so, yeah. against your old parts. Yeah, looks pretty good. I don't have a micrometer or anything like that. So. Now I'm going to get this old bearing out of here. Get down like that. Let me get a socket. Alright, so it shouldn't take much. What size socket are you using there? This is a 36 millimeter. It fits the inside of the race pretty much right okay. there. They make special tools to do this, but if you don't have it, this works just fine. Most guys, honestly, they do something like this. You're not worried about this bearing. You're not worried about breaking it. All you want to do is you want to get it out and don't want to leave the inner race stuck inside there, you know, bust the bearing as far as that goes. So you want to be kind of gentle with it. But as you saw earlier when we were knocking the stud out, it kind of pulled that bearing out part way. They're not, it's not a pressed fitting. So we should be able to just kind of have okay. it and there it goes. So you're not, like I said, too Piece worried of about pie. it. Right. <laughs> you're not too worried about it coming out. There's that. So we'll get a towel in here and clean this up. Where did the paper towels go? It's... Oh yeah, I, I, I believe we have found our problem. Now, this is something that even if even if the other side's fine, you go ahead and change the other one anyway. They always replace stuff like this in pairs. Kind of like shock absorbers and struts and stuff like that. Or springs. Brakes. Brakes. We're going to clean this thing up a little bit. But I want to protect my table, at least a little bit. And I wouldn't hurt to protect my phone. Just, I'm not going to go real hard with it. Just, I mean. But if you've used brake cleaner, you know brake cleaner comes out pretty dang hard. I'm going to use a little bit of grease to put this bearing back in. It doesn't have to be really anything special. Kind of grease just loops it up, makes it slide in a little easier. It's not something that the bearing depends on because it's a sealed bearing. Yeah. You could use differential fluid, right? You can, you could use an oil. If you didn't have grease. Yeah. Go ahead and 
can take it a little bit on the, the bearing itself as well. Like I say, it doesn't have to be super huge amounts or anything like that. Now, does it have to go in a certain way? or It does. If you look, you've got this tapered piece here. This is mm -hmm. actually the piece I was concerned with. It goes outboard or towards your backing plate. Or towards where the wheel's going to be. Right. Okay. Towards your brakes, towards your backing plate. And you want to get it, even though it came out really easy, you still want to get it as even as possible. So you don't want it going in crooked because you can bust the bearing. Now we're going to use we're going to use this socket over here. Uh, oh good, I got a brake clamp on there so I can clean the gloves a little better. This is a two and a half inch socket, and I'm just going to lightly tap it as well. And there she goes. Like butter. Like oh, butter. Uh, Alright, so we want to go ahead and clean up the axle. Well, we got our bearing put in. We'll just move it kind of to the side. Joe, you should be watching. I'm watching. I don't know how you can see it all the way there. Okay. Yeah, I'm also listening too. Uh, that's where your snap ring goes. Whoops. That's where your snap ring goes right there. Sorry about the lighting, it's a little bright out there. I had to change positions. Yeah. Okay, so that's in. Ready to go. So what you want to do now, there again, get a little bit of grease. You want to grease the shaft here. Because we're fixing to go back together with it. You said shaft. Family show. Too. Family show. Yeah. What you could do too is get yourself like an old paint cap or like one of these caps and just fill it full of this grease and you just gotta you know, dip your fingers in it and go. Go ahead and put a little bit around here because this is gonna sit down in this boot. So you put a little grease on this boot too, kind of keep it from getting messed up as you go in with it. He cleaned that all up uh, off camera, by the yeah, way. That's why it's, it, it looks all, all nice and shiny now. Buffed it out just a little bit and everything. Um, remember to grease all the way up to here because you got to go with that bearing and that that ring. You have to go all the way down. So you're riding on that too. And I've been myself that grease all over my hands. Towels, bring this off. Alright. In case you didn't notice, it makes logical sense. I don't know where your camera's at. When you're working on it on this side, the emergency brake stuff, the bell crank and all, hang off the table. That way it's not all cockeyed and everything. Yeah, I don't want to have to replace that whole assembly, that's for sure. Yeah. Alright. So gently, because you remember how easily that bearing moved. Slide the bearing back on. Put the housing. Still got a pretty decent amount of play in it. Now, did you, did you lube the inside of that bearing too, or no? I did, yes. Okay. I did move the inside of the bearing as well. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this tone, or this one that came off the inside here, because we got a new one. 
they want, they might actually take it. Because the seal is not riding on it, I might actually use the one that the seal was riding on. Okay, so like I say, the, the kit that I bought was for a non-ABS, but it didn't come with the two. So what I'm thinking is the, the one that was in the seal that has the damage to it, I'm using it for the inner um, retainer. And it is, I put a little grease on the inside of it. Taper side up. And taper side up. Or it's fine. Then you take your bearing tool, you've got your opening cut here, the long end, slide it over, and it'll sit on top of that. You'll, eventually you'll make sure that's squared. We're going to take our other tool. Just underneath here, I'm not sure how many it's going to be. Let me see if that takes out real quick. Alright, so we got it centered up in there pretty good. We'll have to do some, once I get it closer, some fine adjustments to it. Okay, going ahead and Trying to press that bearing. You have to try to make sure with that bearing tool in there that it's lined up on that retainer pretty square. And then obviously here, you want to make sure that that socket, we're using a three quarter impact socket. It's a real heavy duty one. That's got from somewhere. I don't even know where I got it from. So making sure it's squared. Is it square? Huh? Is it squared up? Yeah, I think it is, isn't it? It's a little off to the back. Yep. There. there. Yeah, that should be good. That's good to me anyway. Make sure the bottom is still square. Feels pretty good. Alright. Moving. So that's always a good sign. Big noises should not be uh, what we should be hearing with this, right? <laughs> we hear loud pops, something's gone wrong. <laughs> this should go on fairly easy, like it's going. And when you feel the maximum resistance where the jack won't jack anymore, then you're done. Should be. We may have to reposition with this. We might run out of bottle jack. We might either yeah, run out of bottle jack because of the, the new crappy design we have here, or we may hit the bottom of the uh, stand. press. Press stand. When they put that cross piece under there, 
guess they had some problems with it. This will be going pretty good though. Yeah. This should be almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Children of all ages. That's all she wrote. We're going to go ahead and put the snap ring on. I don't know if you can see it very well or not. But we'll do our best. Yeah. Basically, just get it, get it and try to spread it. And then push it down. I'm not really exactly sure why it would spread like that. There's another good use for that tool. There you go. Well, that one's going to have to do it better. Oh, there it is on the ground. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and grease our shaft up again. Or maybe surface. I guess I had talked about leaving the tone ring off. But. As I think about it more and more, you can't really leave the tone ring off. I'm greasing the inside of the tone ring as well. Because if you leave the tone ring off, let me find my new. And if you leave the tone ring off, then this retainer won't sit in the right place. Because you have to have this retainer sitting in the right place in order to match up with the seal. So if you left this tone ring off and just put this on and it went to place for this, you'd have absolutely no seal. All your oil would run out. So you kind of don't have a choice. you got to put your tone ring back on. Which, no, I don't need it. Which way does that tone ring go? Is there a way? Yeah, there's a hollow side and a face side. Face side towards the the truck inboard. Sorry. Okay. Pretty sure. I'll make sure on that. Uh, yeah, get a little bit more grease. This. This. Use the tapered side. Goes inboard. Same as the other one. If you're doing one that doesn't have ABS. And you get all your parts from Toyota. The way I understand it, the new Toyota seals are deeper inset to the inboard side. So you have to take that tone ring and flip it around and use the flat side and not the tapered side towards the seal. Because otherwise you won't have enough sitting on the seal and you get a little bit of wear in the bearings. And It'll start go leaking and prematurely wear out your seal. And there you go. All right, pause for just a minute. Okay. All right. So where are we now? All right. We're getting getting ready to press the ABS tone ring and the retainer. So we're gonna go ahead and push this on. And when you put this on here, you have a little window in that bearing installer tool and what people have found is that when you start getting shiny axle through it your tone ring and your uh, and your retainer you measure five millimeters is the, the best place for it to sit to ride on that seal in the right place yeah, and we'll show you afterwards. There's a little opening on the tool part that's right there. And so the shiny part of that axle that you saw that he cleaned up earlier and greased up real good, you only want five millimeters of that showing, and that should be perfectly set. And he's going to use the five millimeter 
uh, Allen wrench to, to, to measure that so that one set silver uh, is the same width as that Allen wrench then we'll know exactly, it'll be exactly set where it needs to be. It'll be exactly five millimeters, or, you know, if there's a little wear on the tool, if there is. Yes. Just a little bit, Joe. Okay, so it's off the tool, the machine, the press, but we wanted to show you what he was looking at since we couldn't capture it on film. See how that silver point, if you wouldn't mind still pointing, thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, shows through that gap. That needs to be about five millimeters, and that's what we're using the Allen wrench for. And so as you can see, it's just, it's just a little over, but that should still be okay. But that's kind of what he was looking at while it was on the press. So that's what you want to look at when you're looking at it that way. Okay, so we're going to try to do the seal, the wheel seal now. Uh, there are several types of pullers you can get and whatever for doing that kind of stuff. I'm going to try this gear wrench pry bar. You're not worried about saving the seal. You just don't want to tear anything up while you're in there. Alright. Here it comes. There we go. See, it is a different type of seal. Oops. But it's the same thickness, same diameters, same design, just different material. All right, this has just got a metal, this is coated in rubber. I guess some would consider it an upgrade. It may actually be exactly the same as this one. It might be set a little bit further deeper. But we're all right. Oh, I need to take a towel. Let's go around here a little bit. I'll help you with that. Uh, I'll protect you. Thank you. Look. Just got to clean any excess oil from the tubes here. Clean it up. That didn't hurt. All right. Do the same thing like we've done with everything else, basically. Put a little bit of grease in there. Helps it slide. And they do make install tools bearing drivers, steel drivers. I didn't even think about it before we started this, and I don't have one. So I'm using... Socket and an extension and my rubber mount here because it's so set so far in. But you got to be really careful when you do it because you don't want to mess the seal up. What size socket is it? This is a inch and 13 sixteenths. All right. Looks like you're going to be shopping for a lot of large sockets. Or you could just buy a, <laughs> buy a tool. Buy the right tool. You know, start it with, you, you know, with your hands if you can. Try to keep it as straight as possible. The grease helps there. Just starting it. Feel it. 
so it should end up flush. Optics, not a sponsor. Okay, so now we got that in. I wanted to clean this up a little bit because I don't like the rust and stuff. That's that's where that O-ring is going to sit, which is the only thing I haven't brought down here yet. But I, would, you know, I could get Dan to grab that new O-ring. Okay. I'm sitting on the phone, so that's the new one, right? Yeah, because the old okay. one's right here in the paint. So I'm just going to use my Dremel tool and a little buffer. Try to buff that out. stick on there so it won't fall off while you're trying to put it in. And it sits right there like that. Now putting in the axle. When we go to put the axle in here in just a minute, you have to be careful when you're putting it in, you don't let it ride on that seal and mess that seal up. on your orientation as well when you get it put back together. Uh, that you have your, your belt cranking all in the right place. So thank the Lord that worked out really well. You'll hand me the nuts there, and the pink pan, flange nuts. And the whole thing come up. One, two, three, four, and a socket. I need the ratchet, and it should have the 14 millimeter socket on it, or wherever the 14 millimeter socket is. There is a torque spec for these. I'll look it up in a minute. And then obviously torque specs should be measured in ugga dugga. Right. <laughs> then obviously once you get these all tightened down, you will put your cable back on and put your brake line back on. Now, will we have to do any bleeding? We will have to bleed the brakes. The brakes. But should, shouldn't, shouldn't be a lot, though, right? Shouldn't be. It should just be here, but you usually will do all of them. If I'm not mistaken. I hate bleeding brakes. Well, if we didn't introduce a lot of air into the system, it should only hopefully I can just do the rear ones. I don't think. Alright, so he's got it all buttoned back up. Oh, let me come on this side. Father showing that because it's just the opposite of taking it off, but all four of those bolts put back on, torque to torque to 48 pound feet. Uh, we've got the brake line reattached. 
and the uh, parking slash emergency brake all clipped back in. So basically, at this point, you uh, do the other side. The other side, same. So we're not going to show that either. And then uh, you have to go through and bleed your brakes. And Joe, what was your advice on that? Whenever you do, whenever you bleed your brakes, especially on drum brake, so always make sure you install your drums and push them all the way in. Put your wheel on, torque your lug nuts down to the correct torque so that everything is seated where it's supposed to be. Then you can bleed your brakes. It's a little bit more of a pain in the but I guess to try to do it like that with the wheel on, but it will ensure that your uh, brake drum is properly seated against the axle. And there you have it. That's how you replace your bearing and your 2001 Toyota Tacoma pickup truck. So this, the other side, as I said before, is the same as that side. So I hope you enjoyed it. Joe, thanks a lot for uh, showing us how to do that. That was way out of my wheelhouse, but now I've learned something. And hopefully you've learned something too. And it's not as hard as it looks. It's not. It's just a little time consuming. Of course, having the right equipment helps without a press. Like we said earlier, you probably have to go to a machinist to get that done. But anyway, I've got a few other videos on my Dodge Magnum and on my uh, Honda Odyssey. So uh, we'll put a couple of those links over here somewhere. Click subscribe, ring the bell, and keep on going. We'll see you next time.